The Neoliberal Round podcast is a podcast from the Neoliberal Corporation. The Neoliberal Corporation is working with advanced property analysis, real estate wealth, Belkin USA, Southwest Airlines, Alaska Mileage Plan, the Hilton Hotels Honors Rewards Program, High IHG Rewards Club, Qatar Airways, Club Sticks dot com and big business commerce and also anchor.fm from spotify we thank our sponsors and our supporters and we hope that you will continue to support us by supporting our sponsors and our partners the neoliberal corporation serving the world today to solve tomorrow's challenges I am Reynaldo McKenzie, and welcome to another episode of the Neoliberal Round Podcast. Today, today, we have an interesting story for you because we are just um, we just finished a, a two hour interview with the twenty the U.S. twenty twenty four presidential candidate, Mr. John Anthony. John Anthony Castro. I think that was done last week, Monday, and it was quite revealing and quite interesting. And from that, we have breaking news. We have breaking news. Yes, the evidence is mounting. The evidence is mounting and staggering, suggesting that Donald Trump was strategically involved in what is now known as the American experiment. The attempted takeover of the U.S. federal government which was planned two days ahead. We, have, we obtained this breaking news on Monday, May 2, when Reverend Ronaldo McKenzie of the Neoliberal Round or the Neoliberal Corporation sat down with Mr. John Anthony Castro for an interview, which lasted for two hours long. It was very revealing with a breaking news. And of course, the summary of this is available in the Neoliberal Post at https semicolon forward slash forward slash RonaldoCMackenzie.com and the full interview is available on our podcast, the previous podcast, The Neoliberal Round. And of course, we are going to release the full transcript of the interview in the Neoliberal Commentary in our LinkedIn news. So you can check that out. The Neoliberal Commentary, you'll see the full transcript. However, in this article, we and in this story today, we are, we are interested in what Mr. Castro revealed which we believe is breaking news, as he said that most, if not all, regular Americans are not privy to the evidence gathered so far in the ongoing investigation regarding the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Mr. Castro, who is privy to such information, revealed that the evidence is being gathered, seems to suggest that Donald Trump has responsibility in the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol, and that Donald Trump may not make it to the general elections if he plans to run, given the staggering evidence that is mounting, which is not available publicly as the, evidence, as the investigations are still underway. But what we know, what we know from Mr. Castro and from other sources is that the GOP may be reconsidering their position on Trump, given the evidence that will be released soon. He said, he went on to say, um, as it relates to um, what's going on with DeSantis, he says, everybody is rallying with DeSantis in Florida, believes that Mr. Trump is going to go down in flames. That's Mr. 
Castro's word. And of course, Mr. Castro, Mr. Castro says that um, he fully intends on suing Mr. Donald Trump. And why he says that, he says that, that um, he will be suing Trump in New Hampshire. He said only a few people can sue Trump due to standing or, um, or direct entry. Uh, if so, if someone is disqualified, say, for example, if Donald Trump is disqualified, a regular American cannot bring suit against him, but a Republican who has standing can. And so his candidacy, his candidacy is also based on this censorship, which he plans to levy, levy at the next, uh, at the, at the new, at the, at the primary coming up, the first Republican primary that's coming up in, um, November in November of 2023. So he believes that what well, he's saying that it has to be a fellow Republican who can bring uh, a suit against Mr. Trump and he tends to sue Mr. Trump. So though that's breaking news coming in and actually we have excerpts of those of the interview where he indicated this breaking news. We're going to play that for you. Uh, we're going to play that for you and we're also going to play the um play the play the excerpt where he says that he intends on suing Mr. Donald Trump ex um, and 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 explaining that only Americans with certain standing can bring certain suit and he will be doing that and um and we have that for you right here and after that there's also another story that we are working on here at the neoliberal round it's a bre- it's breaking news and it's a developing story that um that we actually started to we had started to work on this story before and we and we published a story for you guys um in the neoliberal commentary some time ago but we have an we're going to be we uh, you're going to hear my my conversation about that particular that particular story as it relates to the US elections voting patterns politics and the supreme court so we have all that for you in this filler and very important episode of the Neoliberal Round podcast. We'll be right back after these messages. You believe that Mr. Trump is part of the toxic and you believe he bears any responsibility for what happened in January 6th? Oh, yeah, I mean... Based on, so I've reviewed a lot of the evidence from the January yeah. committee, and I think when they finally put this all together into, um, it's going to be a book like the 9-11 Commission Report. Um, yes. I think it's going to be very clear that this was orchestrated starting two days after the election. Yes. And yes. it had to do with the fact that um, they immediately, um, they were immediately replacing people in the Pentagon. They were yes. putting people in key positions. Uh, they were changing the authority over uh, who could uh, activate the National Guard? Uh, they were um, immediately promoted Michael Flynn's brother, gave him an extra right. star, and then put him in the right department. They would oversee and have direct power over yes. uh, National Guard and other elements of uh, protection in Washington, D.C. Uh, they there There is no doubt. A lot of people just don't know this yet because it hasn't been revealed yet. Yes. They were actively trying to overthrow the American Republic. They were going to overthrow it. That was their that was their goal. Yeah. They only decided to back down when they saw that things weren't going as planned. The plan was to zip tie members, hold them hostage, get yes. the rest to flee, and then at that point make a declaration of a new republic. They were literally going to overthrow the entire federal government. Yes. And just yes. people yes. just they think that uh, people like me and others are being hysterical, and it's just because they haven't seen the evidence yet. But I think once the evidence is revealed, they're going to see how close. The American experiment came to yes. completely collapsing. Collapsing. Well, thank you so much, and uh... welcome back. That was uh, that was uh, John Anthony Castro on May two when I posed a question to him if he believes that Donald Trump bears a responsibility in the in the January 6th insurrection. And of course, he believes that he does bear, he bears responsibility and not just that he believes so, but the evidence that, that, are, that, are, that they are gathering would suggest that. 
And first of all, not only are we, are we not only do we know that now, but what we also know, of course, is that Michael Flynn, Michael Flynn's, Flynn's brother, was being strategically set up in certain key places. There were key positions that were being manipulated, and what so that so as to facilitate this. He says that this was or, the American experiment was orchestrated two days before the elections, where they were replacing people in the pen, at the Pentagon. They were changing the authority in terms of who could activate the National Guard, and they were making key positions such as Michael Flynn's brother in certain and that's what we know so far. So, and they wanted to zip tight some 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 of the uh, the, the, the politicians that was at, at, in the Capitol building and 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 make a declaration. Quite interesting. We so we are we 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 we, we are we we are waiting. We are waiting for the full revelation. We are waiting for the full revelation. And guess what? We will have it here for you at the Neoliberal Round and the Neoliberal Corporation. We will have the story here for you based on the, where we are the clo- and the proximity to the news. We will have the information for you as it unfolds, as it relates to Donald Trump and the American experiment and so on and so forth. And what Mr. Castro hopes and seeks to do. And um, we, we, but what does he? And what is he doing? He's seeking to censor Donald Trump, and we also have that take for you. And we're going to play it right now. You know, there's that old saying: um, "Don't kill the messenger." You know, everybody knows that saying, right? Well, it's a saying for a reason. <laughs> It's yes. that all throughout history, messengers have been killed. <laughs> and so, you know, unfortunately, you know, we're, we're trying to bring a message. We're, we're, we're trying to say something positive, something good. Um, and unfortunately, some people just don't like being told that. And, uh, and so that's always a concern, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, but especially in this hyper-politicized environment, you know, we, we saw things happening like where, you know, the Trump uh, – Supporters were trying to run a, a Biden bus off the road. Um, <laughs> yes, you know, yes. Yeah, you know, we, we saw all this ridiculousness, right? You mm-hmm. know, this, this uh, radicalization of, uh, yes. of, you know, one side in particular. But, you know, it, 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 both sides are becoming hyper politicized and pulled apart, you know, you know, to both extreme ends. But this also roots back to gerrymandering. You know, it's the Supreme Court has not had the political spine, you know, to to do something about it, you know, and, and to put an end to gerrymandering and try to create a formula. Uh, they'd rather just do this hands-off approach um, and, and watch our republic erode from, from within. And um, so, you know, th- I have my fears, you know, and I have my concerns about about doing this, um, about yeah. making it. A, a, I mean, the central part of my candidacy is that I'm going to be suing Trump in New Hampshire. Right. Primary, you know, and, uh, well, and, I saw, and I was, I'm so happy you brought that up. That's on the flip side. I wanted to ask yeah. you about and, um, yeah, yeah. Only, and, I mean, and uh, you say that only certain people have that authority to do so and so on and so forth. But yeah, sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, unfortunately, the courts have, have uh, uh, elaborated on this term called standing, you know, where you have to have a yeah. direct injury and a voter doesn't have a direct en- injury. I disagree with that just out there for, for all the viewers. Um, I, I think that every single American would be uh, have a direct injury if somebody disqualified was running. But unfortunately, the courts have not held that. And right. uh, and unfortunately, once it goes to the general election, they view it as what's called a political question, which is their way of saying we're not going to resolve that. So yes. the the conclusion, based on all my legal research, is that it would have to be a fellow Republican presidential primary candidate that brings this suit against Trump to allow the federal judiciary the opportunity to determine uh, the extent to which Section 3 of the 14th Amendment anti-insurrection disqualification clause applies to Trump. And I fully intend on doing that. And as you can imagine, with some of uh, you know his fanatical supporters uh, and some. And of you know, sorry for those of us who didn't understand what you repeat that again. You full intend on doing what? Oh, I fully intend on suing uh, Donald Trump in New Hampshire. New Hampshire. The reason why yes. it's New Hampshire is because that's the first Republican primary in the country. Okay. And so uh, the filing for that would open, I believe, the second Tuesday of uh, of November 2023, so next year. Yes. 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 And. Uh, I would have to wait. I mean, I'm going to be there like 
the morning it opens, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, we'd have to wait until Trump files, and then we're both candidates. Yes. And then literally at that moment, we're going to just electronically file the, the federal complaint. Yes. And so at that point, it kicks off the litigation, you know, between right. you know, Anna Castro versus Donald John Trump. Uh, yes. And it would be the question of whether he was disqualified under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which says any person that has given aid or comfort or uh, participated in any way in an insurrection is ineligible to hold public office. And right. so we'll see at that point if the federal judiciary has the line and yes. gets to bring on this issue and to make a declaration. Um, right. But I can tell you that, uh, you know, the fact that everybody's already rallying behind DeSantis in Florida is evidence that they think Trump is going down in flames. <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a big part of my, uh, uh, my, my candidacy, but because I view him as poison and toxic, and so a lot of people yes. are like, you know, oh, but you're about bipartisanship, bringing everybody together, so why are you trying to uh, have yes. Trump qualified? Um, and it's just like, look, you, you can't have toxic poison in, in the mixture when you're right. trying to yes. bring people together uh, because together. They're, they're an active element that is trying to prevent that. And you yes. have to neutralize that first. Once we neutralize right. that, then we can bring everybody together. And so, um, you know, but uh, unfortunately... You know, I understand where you're coming from here. Sorry to cut. Here is it that, you, you, you know, you're about bipartisanship. You believe that you are against extremism because you believe that that's against progress. And it will be hypocritical to what you're about if you don't, and some of these, these, there is a process to this. You know, at the same time, you have to also root out the toxic, while at the same time. That was, uh, that was uh, John Castro, and towards the end, I, I commented a bit, but um, he, that was quite powerful. He, he talks about fear, is it? About um, one of the fears he has because of what he's doing and what has happened in the past, especially in the last election, we saw some uh, some the radicalization of our politics. He talks about this radicalization of our politics, and alluded to the fact that Biden bus, one of Biden's bus, was attacked by one of Trump um, campaign supporters. He talks about that, he, and he talks about the Supreme Court does not have the spine to do anything about gerrymandering. They lack that spine. Um, the spine, the, the people who are this, that the system is, or the system, the, the people that we, the Americans set up, we, we, it, we have a system in place to protect against radicalization of our politics, to, to, to protect against gerrymandering. But here we have, because as we talk about the issue of power, and one of the reasons what we saw where Western leaders were slow to act against Russia, because as we said, said that many of them were in bed. With, with, with Russia they're in bed with China and these countries are very strategic in creating certain kind of associations and then two, three, four years down the line they, 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 they advance some kind of, 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 of coup or some kind of radical behavior such as what's going on in Ukraine today and the world is slow to act because they fear, they're afraid of, 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 of certain benefits that they are already receiving from Russia or China. But he, he talks about the fact that the Supreme Court does not have the, the spine to do anything about gerrymandering. And, but he says that he has that spine and he will be suing Trump in the New Hampshire. In, the, uh, at, um, in, New, in New Hampshire at the, at, the pres at the Republican presidential primary that's coming up in 2023. And he said that only people can sue Trump due to standing or, 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 a, or a direct entry, uh, which, is, um, which, is, which he is against. And I believe that if he becomes the next president, that's one of the things that he'll be working to change uh, so as to ensure that all Americans Every American has rights to sue, to sue or to censor any person who is seeking elected office who is disqualified. It cannot be from the same party that the people come from. Because there is no will. There is no political will 
when 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 people are when, 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 when people are in each other's pockets how can you expect those very same people to investigate those people their friends and their donors that's part of the problem you know and so we 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 we, we commend mr mr castro for the daring the daring task and the daunting task that's 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 before him and next next we are working a story just so you know we are working a major story uh, th- which speaks to the u.s elections which speaks to voting behavior the supreme court and the politics in this country and we hope that and it's you'll hear that right after this So I I have I have my I have a I'm working on a story. It's in a sense it's a it's a powerful story. It's breaking news I think it's breaking news. I have I I think I actually published a story. It's it looks at voting or voting behavior in America um, among certain population. And um, some time ago, I wrote an article, I think it was a year ago, just after Biden was elected. And there was this drive, this drive to the Republicans were trying, were, we understand, were trying to, uh, there was suspicion in terms of the election. Pe- people were claiming that the elections were rigged. Um, it was fake. And, I mean, and it's it's the same every year. And of course, um, the election commissions and per- persons did studies and say, no, the election aren't ra- rigged. It's, you know, um, the attorney general um, also released a report saying that his own attorney general was also saying that. But um, I did an article because I was having anecdotal con- anecdotal and just conversations in community with people because I talked to everybody in community in D.C., you know, in Philadelphia, in New York. Those are my places. And I came to realize that um, there was a story. I realized something about voting patterns, especially during the last election with COVID. So I did re- I, So I did over the past year and a half. I started doing research about voting patterns, about and, and in relation to the anecdotal story that I wrote in LinkedIn some time ago that talks about myth. Uh, that talks about the ele- the 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 um. It says. Uh, a theory of a conspiracy theory and I call it a conspiracy theory but it's not a conspiracy theory because they, okay but I'm being deliberate I have a way with words like she for example the neoliberal I'm not an, I'm not a neoliberal but it's I have a way with words words provide an opportunity for conversation and for dialogue because it's a, I, they look at you they look at the word and, they, and then you have an, 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 an opportunity to explore where I play with words I use pawn a lot I play with words Okay, I play with words. It's very important because it helps to drive home a story. It helps to facilitate understanding. So I said in the, and if I could bring up the, I'm gonna bring it up. It's uh, if I could find it something about myth, and the elections. It is powerful. It's a story I wrote about a year ago. Um, I have to go on my profile, and um, if I can, f- okay, 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 I will be able to find it. It's in the neoliberal commentary. Go to all activity. Go to articles. Good. And then I'm going to go all the way. It's my first article. The first article I ever did is an article that I published in March 3, 2021. I mean, sorry, the first article in LinkedIn, in the neoliberal commentary. And it was called A Conspiracy Theory, Myth or Truth. COVID, the democratic plot to win the U.S. elections and the burden and difficulty for Republicans to find proof. And um, I started off by saying I'm saying absentee ballots and or mail-in ballots or drop boxes create problems for democracy. That's what the Supreme Court is grappling with today as Republicans push massive voter suppression laws across the U.S., admitting that they can't win without making it harder for black and brown Democrat-leaning people to vote. And guess what? They may be right. 
uh, you know, I got a lot of backlash for this article on both sides. Um, some Republicans like it and some Democrats, but Democrats hated it because it spoke volume to the NSA. It was very revealing, and but it was based in research. And so I started doing research when I started at going to Georgetown in September of last year, which I didn't really tell anybody because it was a story that I wanted to bring where I started to try to understand voting patterns and we were fine during, during the elections last year or year before, or during, sorry, not last year, year before last, whichever the time, it was what, 2020, 2021, COVID really, people were, the way how people voted wasn't the way people usually historically voted in America, okay? It, it wasn't the way people voted. And I wanted to, under, okay, and there were people who were making up claims about the, the elections being rigged. And then having start having working in communities, I realized that first of all, a lot of men didn't vote in the last. Uh, a African American men don't usually vote in elections, especially black men. They don't really vote. Yeah. They don't really vote. But this election, they voted, and people were saying this is quite unusual the behavior of some people who voted. <laughs> How is it that they voted? And then we said, please remember, the fact that COVID allow provide provide an opportunity for what for now voting to be mailed in for you know okay for voting to be done within the home plus and then i talked about the fact of the me too movement and so on and so forth and so who was voting for the for so who was voting for these people for these men the mamas in the home took control of the voting and with this me too movement you know, the more is to be said. Listen to the article. Listen to the interview. Listen to the listen to the um to the story that I have. It's it's breaking. It's powerful. I can't wait to release this podcast. It is powerful. In fact, I um because I interview people now. Not only do I have anecdotal evidence, but I have anthropological evidence. Where I interview people, some secretly and some publicly, <laughs> asking their opinions about did you vote in the last election? Yes and no. Okay, no meaning, yes, I did vote, but I didn't really vote. My mom voted for me. <laughs> okay, and who did she vote for? You know, we'll be right back. You know what? I want to say anything else. This is a breaking news at the Neoliberal Round podcast because we are talking about elec- elections and voting patterns and this new thrust to, you know, on one end, people are saying that they're making it difficult for people to vote. While at the other end, there are people who are saying that the the system is rigged because at the last election, there are those who voted who did not really vote. The system provided an opportunity for that. We want to we want to prevent against that. But and I be, and I say to you that they, both sides are onto something. I think they are also right. Okay. See, for example, I'm I'm Jamaican, and I'm going to say to you that I understand. Americans want to protect their borders. Immigration is an important issue. I'm Jamaican. I'm not going to be selfish. When the, when the Haitians were coming to Jamaica, running, okay, when the Haitians were coming to Jamaica because of, they were having what, some kind of catastrophe was happening so many years ago when I was living in Jamaica. What was it in the 1990s? And the Jamaicans were mad that the government was allowing all these Haitians to come to Jamaica. Okay? So people people think about so we, we are not, let me, let me tell you, so I am fear. This gentleman and the neoliberal round, we are fear to the news and we are fear to the issues. Okay? All right? You want to protect your border from Haitians, but you want to fly. You want to make, you want to come here. <laughs> okay? <laughs> um, you know, you see how people are? Huh? You see, that is the kind of world we live in. We, we here at the neoliberal, we are about fearness. We look at all sides of the spectrum. We are going to report the news as it is we're not going to hide it because i'm jamaican okay yes yes we're going to say there are people who have kids there are people who have children in this country okay and they and they would lie and they lie at the border saying that they're not pregnant and they come here and have children and the next thing you know that child is an american that happens okay we're not going to hide the the story we're not these things happen okay in society but we also have to do, but we also understand that immigration is also unfair to some people. 
from certain communities and people travel for opportunities as well. And what's going on in communities make people have to do creative things in the world or the, the dynamics in the world. Okay. So when we talk about this particular next story that we have, that we're going to be talking about uh, in the Neoliberal Round podcast, it's, it's breaking news. It's powerful. It's not just, an, it's not anecdotal. It's anthropological. It's ethnographic. It's based on conversations I've had with over a hundred people in communities with, um, from New York City to Philadelphia City to Jersey to those areas and making comparisons. And so the need for having, the need to ensure that you strengthen elections is important. The need to ensure that, um, that elections aren't rigged so that the process, because I believe in fairness, because I said to you, I believe in competition, but, but competition must be fair. Competition must be fair. The market must be free. And we talk about, uh, I think in the interview with John Castro, he talks about there's a false equivalence, a false equivalence where, you know, and I've always said that people purport and people will say, oh, oh, you're anti because you're against global, a particular a globalization and business and so on and so forth. Are you marching for unions? You are against um, free market and you're socialist. But no, that's not true. I am for fair game. I'm for fair game. It's like the the Russians, okay? Or it's like Sharapova. She wanted to play tennis and get all those championships, okay? But guess what? She was cheating the system. <laughs> or, or, okay, they're, getting, they're, they're using drug enhancement, okay? So that now they are ahead of the game. That's unfair competition. The same thing in business. You see what happened in business where there's unfair trading practices, antitrust laws need to be enforced and so on. That's what we're against. Unfair tactics. Companies that, that do things that, that, that create an unfair hegemony, a monopoly of competition. That's what we're against. And even in election, we have to ensure that the election systems are rigged. And I think um, in one sense, people are saying that it's a matter of perspective. Oh, the Republicans are trying to uh, make it difficult, wish difficult for black and brown people to vote. But that's a, that's a, that's a political ta- talking point, okay? Because to be true and to be fair, there are people who take advantage of the system, especially during COVID. During COVID, the way, you know, it provided a lot of opportunities. So there need to be checks and balances. Can I tell you this right now? Right now, if I, I can show, I recently, I went on my phone to check some security reports and I saw three breaches. Tw- tw- a voter ID was created for me in Philadelphia, in New York, and in New Jersey. I, you know, I did not create a voter ID. I did not create a voter ID. I didn't, I didn't create no voter registration or anything like that. But the, 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 the safe, the security report, the security report, the security report that I, that I just, um, that was just, that I just obtained via my VPN and via the other, and via this, the safe mode that I purchased through Verizon, um, reveal that there are several breaches, but, of, but there are three of them, notably, that related with voting. Mm. In, 20, in 2020, there was a registration card for, for me. Although I did not register and I'm not eligible to vote, there was, a regist- there was a voter registration ID for me done in 2020. There was one in 2018 as well. And there was one in 27, or 2017, I think, or something of the sort. So who voted? So who voted? I mean, where are those? Where, you know, so, and, so that's what I'm saying to you. The issue, of, the, the issue of voter fraud is an issue in this country. And we are going to be promote. We will be revealing breaking news at the in a in a probably later on today or tomorrow on the neoliberal round podcast. And just so you know, the neoliberal corporation is partnering with the Hilton Honors. We're partnering with uh, IHG Rewards Club. We're partnering with Qatar Airways. We're partnering with Alaska Mileage Plan. We're partnering with Southwest Airlines, Belkins US, 
and we are also partnering with the Advanced Property Analysis. And of course, we're partnering with Clubsticks.com and Big Business Commerce. Please, I invite you guys to support them as they support a grassroots company as the Neoliberal Corporation. And you will be seeing several of our articles and news. We'll be carrying them as they continue to promote, to promote and to support us here at the Neoliberal Round and the Neoliberal Corporation. And as you support us and as you support them and you support them, you support us. But stay tuned to the breaking news that we will going to be featuring later on this week. Entitled, entitled. Well, it's, we, we haven't had an, a, a title yet, but it's, it looks at the election and the behavior of and the behavioral pattern of people and the need, the need or the importance of protecting elections. Just as always, it's important to protect information in this country. Thank you for listening to the Neil Liberal Round. Have a great day and see you at the end of this particular promo- this particular take where we will take you the next bring you the next breaking news story. I am excited about it and to be honest I can't wait to share with you the interesting news story, the interesting article. And the ta- the article is entitled what is it entitled? Myth or truth? COVID, the Democratic plot to win the U.S. elections and the burden and difficulty for Republicans to find proof. This is the Neoliberal Round Corporation, serving the world today to solve tomorrow's challenges. Walk good. Welcome back to the Neoliberal Round podcast. The Neoliberal Round podcast is brought to you by the Neoliberal Corporation, serving the world today to solve tomorrow's challenges. And you can contact us at the following. Our number here at the Neoliberal Corporation is 267-317-9202. And you can get with us as well via Twitter, Ronaldo McKenzie, or on our uh, Facebook, Ronaldo.McKenzie, or the Neoliberal Corporation. We are also on Instagram at the Neoliberal Core, and we are also on LinkedIn, the Neoliberal Corporation. And you can subscribe to our to our commentary, our weekly newsletter, the the Neoliberal Commentary, which which is available in our LinkedIn news via LinkedIn. And again, visit us at https colon forward slash forward slash the Neoliberal dot com or Ronaldo C McKenzie dot com. And just so you know, we have several services that's available to you. Not only are we providing a platform for you to peruse and read and access news, but we have tremendous resources and stories that you can read that talks about how to balance life as you complete college, how to, how to ace an exam, and you can check out the Neoliberal Post for those stories. We also did a story on that. And we have several self-help tools about... Um, how to invest your life in others. We have those articles and materials available about, um, in terms of mentoring. We also have several other resources. We also have our book, Neoliberalism, Globalization, Income Inequality, Poverty and Resistance, which is available worldwide, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, so on and so forth, in all platforms, the audio, the audible, the ebook, the nook, paperback and hardcover. And we also have available, we are also working on our new book, Privilege, Power, position, status, and secrets to unlocking divine intervention. And if you are looking for speaking engagements or editorial and publishing help, we also have that available for you. If you guys are looking for, uh, for someone, if you're building web, a website and you need help with um, building a website, we have that available for you through our AntsBusinessSolutions.com. Visit us at antsbusinesssolutions.com or you can connect with us and uh, our, our team here will help you. And we also provide hosting services and we will also provide you with a domain and with a website and so on and so forth. We have a host of services. Connect with us. Connect with us to, again, our number here at The Near Liberal is 267-317-9202. And we just want to give a shout out to Anchor dot fm from spotify 
for sponsoring this innovative and grassroots program. And just so you know that we just received word that we are ranked number 90 in Canada and we are growing in the US. We are now ranked in the 200, I think we're at 240 now in the US in terms of news commentary. We want to thank all of our supporters, all our listeners for making this show um, a top podcast news commentary show and we are growing. So continue to support the show. And we just want to thank you so much for all the work that you are doing. Continue to work with us. The Neoliberal Round Corporation, serving the world today to solve tomorrow's challenges. Have a great day. Yeah, 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 yeah